Hello and welcome to Mostyle TV. My name is Kai Tenemann and Kai Motensen and yes, Maxon did it again and uh, <laughs> the world is excited. Maxon uh, announced uh, the latest Cinema 4D version R15, yes, yeah and as always uh, we uh, Cinema 4D nerds are very happy and um, yeah, I'm in, in the uh, very nice position to to uh, have uh, the beta version of uh, Cinema R15 because I was beta tester and um, <laughs> yes, so uh, and it's uh, us guys allowed uh, to speak a bit about new features and uh, this is what I like to do with you today. Yes, okay, so uh, R15, uh, yeah, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe you, you know I, I uh, use cinema since the first PC and Mac version, yes, yeah, it's, it's version 5 or so, and it's, it's amazing what, what the software uh, has uh, in development in, in the last years, and um, yeah, what's new? Okay, you can see I prepare a, a little scene for the first thing, and when you read, when you sneak read this, there is uh, my file is called A O. Yes, because we have uh, a new amine occlusion feature in R15 uh, for for uh, all that uh, not sure what amine occlusion is. It's very simple. I, I give you a, a test. Yeah, this is uh, my scene. You see, not very sh spectacular. Oh, sorry. Sometimes uh, I, I didn't know the uh, right English words, so you have to excuse me. But uh, I try for you, just for you. So yeah. So here is uh, this, this standard scene: just uh, spheres and, and no light. N there's nothing. Just uh, spheres in a MoGraph cloner, and we have uh, this bunch of fields. Yeah, and amio occlusion is a kind of fake uh, shadow technique uh, that uh, shows uh, uh, this scans the scene and shows how our corners between objects and and made uh, there uh, some kind of shadow. So I show you what I mean. It's very simple. Yeah, you open. Um, the render settings, go to effects and activate amine occlusion. So, cool. And now, am I render now? You see? Hey, <gasps> yeah. Now, if this little uh, shadows uh, bit, uh, on, on corners between objects, and, and that means uh, when you combine this to your uh, normal lighted uh, 3D scene, but uh, the scene becomes more, more grip and, and uh, more plasticity. I don't know if this word exists in English. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, it just looks better. And um, one thing is uh, maybe interesting for you uh, because uh, I, I said it in, in many, many tutorials before. Uh, one thing that in the real world never, never exists is in most of the cases. Black shadow, yeah, uh, in, in uh, outside areas uh, from from the sunlight or something. Uh, always the shadows are a bit littered. Uh, be, be the bounce lights from from the sun or from from different uh, objects, and and this means uh, it's it's always better to give it this ooh, thing, uh, not just plain black. Maybe uh, do it a bit uh, bluish or something, yeah. Normally, uh, bluish is better because it's, it feels more natural. It's okay, uh, and in this case, it's not so interesting, but yeah. So, uh, back to the new amine occlusion. This is an old amine occlusion, we know, and, and what you uh, know, tides uh, might be is the scene renders in, in no time uh, without lag, and so it's, it's uh, okay. And the amine occlusion costs uh, a bit time, yeah. Four seconds in this case, and, and when I zoom, you can see it's it's not very uh, not maybe too high. Um, you see, it's it's a very grainy at this point, yeah. 
because um, moment because uh, the maximum sample uh, amount is, is uh, default on, on 64 and it's, it's not a very clean picture and we have to, to do a higher one so I still see noise and choose a higher one too but you see uh, more samples means cleaner picture but more render time of course so it's it's in, in this case it's not too much but but in a very complex scene uh, it can cost very much time so we have 10 seconds now the grain uh, is okay so we have clean uh, ambient occlusion but now Maxon jumps <laughs> out of the box and say hey we have a new one please use this okay and this new one is called cache yeah I'm using cache so it's a different technique because um, the normal uh, algorithm is brute force it means every pixel in this in the picture is checked and, and calculate and the, the cache one uh, works like the uh, it's a similar algorithm to the um, irradiance map global elimination algorithm in Cinema 40, yeah? That means uh, it didn't check every pixel in the scene, it just uh, check some areas and, and make samples and uh, blur the, the results uh, so that it didn't, it's not so precise but uh, in most of the cases it works and, and okay, I switch it on and we can show, uh, we can see if this works. So you see it's a complete different look and wow two seconds and we have yes very clean ambient occlusion. Okay great and that's the new ambient occlusion cache. No it's not out there's more so um, the, the second benefit from this is um, you, you can save this information about the ambient occlusion on a file. Yeah, you you maybe know uh, when when you have the cinema scene uh, and and save it. Uh, you have uh, a folder called text for for the textures. And when you do some some uh, GI things and something with caches, uh, cinema 4D makes a ordner Illumi or something. Sorry, I, I'm not sure at the moment. We have to show. Yeah, Illum, Illum. Okay. Oh, and you can see, um, Cinema 4D uh, makes a cache for the M inclusion now. It's called test blah blah AO. It's very great because um, for for larger scenes and animation, you can cache this. Yeah, for for this is uh, two seconds. Uh, it's 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 not so important to to save time, but. Uh, uh, imagine you, you make a larger uh, animation, uh, 1000 frames or something, and uh, the fun is you, you can now change the lightning and something, and um, you didn't have to, to recalculate uh, the ambient occlusion every time when you did it at the first time. So I, I, I make a little test to, to show you, show you, show you, <laughs> show you what I mean. So, this is an animation. Yes, the great one. Oh, um, there's a little limitation. Um, this cache thing works just when nothing in the scene moves except the camera. Yeah, so the geometry has to stay. <laughs> so uh, because when when you uh, cache every frame where the geometry stays, um, it just works to to hold this information back when. Um, the animation of the objects uh, didn't change. So, i uh, make a, a fantastic movie out of this. And inclusion, cache, autosave. Okay? And we have a look. Okay, it's rendered now. A, a few. Oh, sorry. I have to say him that's animation. So, it's uh, in, in Europe uh, 25 frames is a second. It's enough for us today. So, and when you switch auto load, yeah, 
every time checked, uh, did I render this before? Yeah, okay, I didn't have to do it again. But the much cooler option is skip prepass. Prepass is this uh, dotty thing, it's a pre-calculation. And when you know, okay, I have uh, cached the, the files, it's, it's not important to do it again. And, um, okay, are you ready now? Yes, he's ready. So, now I can switch to skip prepass and render again. So, and you see, <laughs> without uh, pre calculation, you can render the ambient occlusion. So, and this means, uh, okay, this uh, picture is the same at this moment. So, I give um, physical sky and, and maybe some uh, reflection or something. Uh, first now for better luck. <laughs> so plastic. Okay, not so much reflection. Uh, as always, you you know, uh, not hundred percent reflection uh, didn't uh, looks real. So and now I render this whole scene with new light, with new material again, and didn't have to render. The ambient occlusion again. So yeah, because it's cached on my hard disk and it's very great. You see, new scene. Um, I can change uh, everything except the uh, uh, position and animation of the objects because these positions are baked. And yes, it's cool. So and there is uh, okay. This is, uh, s sounds like a restriction. But it's just for this case because this uh, the objects didn't move and so I cache them in the move position. But you can switch full animation mode, click, and then uh, cinema renders uh, a new uh, ambient occlusion pass for every frame. So that that uh, means it works in uh, full animated scenes too. Okay, so it's it's very great. Uh, yeah, for 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 the samples or something, you you see in, in the old one is, is more or less interesting the maximum sample thing, and here is a sample thing too. Uh, maybe you like to 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 see what what's happened when I use that. Okay, I switch this off. It's very simple because the default width is uh, one hundred and eighty-two. Yeah. Okay, Zack. And when I give them uh, a very, very small amount, 16, uh, because of, of the nature of this algorithm, you, you become uh, some artifacts in the scene. Yeah, it's, it's very good visible here. You see this? Yeah, some artifacts. And that means uh, uh, you, you have to, to rise uh, the sample count. Default is uh, 182. It's uh, 82. Yeah. No. 120. 80. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. My English. Um, and it is in, in most of the cases uh, perfect when you have to desperately save random time. You can lower it or something. And okay, uh, with the rest of the things uh, I. <laughs> Don't like to boring you. This is a new ammo inclusion. Very exciting stuff for uh, Cinema 40 professionals. And uh, yes, thank you for watching. Ammo inclusion with cash mode. Cinema R14. You watch the most like TV and uh, don't be shy to ask questions uh, under this video. I'm happy to answer. Bye bye.